five minutes up. You want to? Come on. Let's go to the John Barrett Salon. Well, I am my mother's daughter. And I remember when I was a little girl, I said to myself, I will never use hairspray. My mother had like helmet head. It was like a helmet. You could have worn it and gone on a motorcycle and never gotten injured. There was so much hairspray. And now, I am my mother's daughter. Wait till you see the amount of product we have to put into my hair to make it look even semi like this. Get ready. So if I'm really lucky, I get Liz once a week for a new kind of shellac manicure where you don't have to put your hands in the infrared thing. It just dries fast on its own. And I always get the same color, off pink, white, clean, simple, non-controversial. That's me. I don't love the way my hands look that much. So I don't want to call a lot of attention to them. So it's conservative. It's we gossip, we talk, it's girl stuff. I love it. It's a form of socialization I look forward to. Okay, so here's me without eyelashes. And since chemotherapy, I really have no eyelashes. And Maurizio does it if I'm lucky and he's available once a week. Maurizio, say hello to the hello, camera. Everybody. Maurizio from Brazil, super duper makeup artist. Um, we've worked together for almost 20 years. And so he puts them on individually. And frankly, I can't do it at all. Not even a strip, they all go boing, pop off. The way Maurizio does my lashes, it goes at the same angle as my cheekbones. I can't explain it, but honestly, a good set of lashes is like a mini facelift. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Life changing. I love that. You have to be really dedicated to beauty to do this. It is so precise, but it adds so much. It just, it's unbelievable what a good set of lashes can do for your look. And if you're lucky enough to live in New York City and be able to come to a salon like the John Barrett Salon, you, it becomes a way of life, right? Post chemotherapy, you don't do the 
Yeah. 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 So step one. All about coming home. So step one. Yes. Do mousses. Two different kinds. Two different kinds. One for curls, one for texture. Because chemo hair is curly hair. And if you go against your hair's nature, especially when you have no color in the shaft, forget it. So we tried that already. That didn't work. So now, as John says, Mr. Barrett of the John Barrett Blonde, listen to your hair. And my hair says, oh, I love all these products. Ooh, what you came them in. Yeah. And even he didn't want it. So oh. I'm totally atypical for a customer here. Most of them are in their beautiful hair. That's covered. Getting blow dry, straight and gorgeous, and then there's okay. I mean, look around and tell me if they see the person with white hair. You know. But Troy, how long? How long have we been working together? Twelve years. At least fifteen. At least fifteen, maybe twenty. So Troy, I knew Troy, and Troy knew me when we were a wild child. Different lifetimes. Yeah, very different. Wow. Yeah. A lot of nighttime lifetime. <laughs> We've all grown up since then. Or something. Or grown up or grown old or something. Kara um, still. It's so much a part of my identity. That was absolutely the most traumatic thing about cancer treatment. Losing that hair was like... I actually put towels over mirrors in the house. I put it on myself. It wasn't, I knew it was so mentally destructive to look at myself or focus on that. I couldn't do it. People assume it's going to be very good morning and don't get losing there, but it's how you do it. You'll never know. I always knew how much I depended on my hair and how much I get behind it. But when that much of your identity, because you're in a fashion business and a visual business, when that much of your identity is taken away from you, it's like ripping out your heart. Yeah. yeah. You are, you become very agoraphobic. You don't want to leave the house. You don't want to socialize. I remember I was invited to a very high-powered dinner party during my treatment, and I wore my wig, and I had to leave early. I felt like a fraud and a freak. Uh, so, yeah, a costume you don't like that doesn't really fit. So I didn't socialize after that. Um, it changed everything. And then I had no hair to come here. And then I knew when I came here, it was going to be really emotional and it was. And, and now here I am with tons of hair and all that hair going halfway down my back will all come up into a set of high So, after having long red hair for most of my adult life and, and my childhood, I was so used to hiding behind my hair when I made the decision to go natural because really I didn't want formaldehyde and chemicals. I had enough of chemicals with chemotherapy. didn't want it next to my brain. I made a list and I said, what is going to make it tolerable for you to have gray white hair. Number one, it has to be pure white and lustrous. Number two, it has to be thick. Number three, it has to be attention getting like my old hair. Number four, it has to be what I call high envy hair, which means every other woman wants it, but can't necessarily have it. Um, 
six needs to really be big and frame my face. It needs to be my calling card to social events and be a, a speaking point, a talking point. And I said about getting that relentlessly. I take, I don't know how many vitamin pills a day for hair and skin. And Troy can tell you, because we've worked together for 20 years, and I will always say with a hairdresser, a great hairdresser like Troy, you work together yeah. to create an image, especially if you're someone like me that's been on TV for 30 years, you're used to, you can't hide, you're used to seeing yourself and going, oh, that was a bad hair day. So, um, and I've never worked with curly hair, I'd always had straight, slightly frizzy hair, but now it was a completely new landscape. And you know what? I took it as a game. I took it as a challenge. We figured it out together. We had some pretty big misses and we've had some pretty good hits. So here we go. We just kept playing until we found the right Yeah. One. Yeah. So we make a wall of white and if you are blow drying the hair with product in it, it comes out thicker and wider. So that is a highlight. We've discovered this as we went. Highlight, a great highlight all around my face. And it also gives you more polish. Yeah. Yeah. Not so much it can be all natural, crazy curls. I am my mother's child portion of this blow dry, which is if you lit a match, the whole salon would go up in fire for the amount of spray we are going to use. All, most of it for more of it, right? Yep. So, yep. For curl, for color, for shine, for holes, for uh, you texture. name it. I'm going underground. Texture curl and I'm going to stay here. I'm going to curl and spray. That's only part of it. 
I can shine. Now comes the next part of it. And then last but not least, here we go. Yeah, we haven't even gotten to the holes yet. Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's surreal. We do this once a week. We're going to do it twice a week. Okay, ready? My hair gets healthier and so it's longer. It's fluffed. It's sprayed. It's everything. It's powdered like Marie Antoinette's wigs. It's white hair redone for the 21st century. It's not easy, ladies. But you know what? Make it a game. Make it fun. I've done it myself at home. Um, and it's always an experiment in the works, constantly. Hair on the move. 